In last week's episode, we talked about CRISPR, gene editing, authenticity, and in what situation you would edit the genes of your children. Let's see what you had to say. Skarker writes a really great and I think thorough comment that we're gonna sort of take in sections. We're not gonna be able to respond to everything, but uh, the thing that they mention that is echoed in a lot of comments from last week's video is that it feels much more passable to edit uh, your child's genome, genome uh, genetic material if it's in the interest of curing a disease and that cosmetic things less so. It feels a lot more uh, unnecessary or risky. And this is echoed in a lot of the conversation you see about this technology and uh, the way that sort of the public at large thinks about it, that this kind of technology, uh, things related to it, tend to have a much wider um, adoption or, you know, sort of get a, get a pass when they have really clear sort of safety and uh, medical related applications. And as soon as we start getting into the cosmetic stuff, people are like, eh, do we really need to like mess with it? Like, what's the point? Skarker though does make a really interesting point saying that if they make some cosmetic change to themselves that is then inherited by their children, that's maybe a little bit more forgivable because they haven't done something to their kids that they haven't done to themselves. Um, and I had never actually thought about that. And that, in my mind too, seems to make it a little bit more forgivable. It's like, you know, it, it sort of makes it feel more, I know this is a loaded word, natural if you're inheriting it that way. More significantly though, Skarker um, responds to and even sort of extends uh, our stated concern about um, who decides what exactly a disability is and relates it specifically to autism, um, which is something that we didn't really have time to talk about, but is I think a huge and important part of this conversation because from a certain view, autism is not a like a disability that needs correcting or erasing, it's just a, a kind of diversity. It's, you know, it, it is a way that certain people happen to be and it is just simply different and not any worse than the way other people happen to be. And provides, I think, a really, a really important test case for thinking through how this technology is used and how it is practically applied um, because, you know, we, we will be able to, if, if, if it is so decided, uh, to essentially reduce the diversity of the world by claiming certain things are um, pathologies when in fact they are just differences. And it's, I think, an encouragement to be very careful. And related to this idea of diversity, Yuki Mekishiko writes a, a really fascinating comment that extends our idea of authenticity um, to something in Mexico, which is called, I wanna make sure I get it right, malinchismo. Yuki explains that malinchismo is when someone, and I'm gonna read this just to make sure that I get it right, is when someone values foreign culture or a foreign phenotype over an indigenous one. And, you know, I think the idea here is that there is one potential use or, you know, maybe misuse of this technology where if your parents do not value a more sort of indigenous uh, um, phenotype or, you know, an, a sort of indigenous expression of uh, your genes that they could design um, and select for more foreign features uh, or, you know, a more foreign genetic makeup. Which is maybe, as Yuki points out, another sort of challenge um, or, or facet to this idea of authenticity. You know, like how much is your um, genetic makeup and your physical expression of that genetic makeup a an expression of authenticity as it relates to your um, to your background and to your heritage? And you know, is there something that is lost in the potential eventual use of this technology to you know purposefully um, homogenize uh, a uh, an entire group of people? I mean, it seems. Yeah, I mean, this is like real far down the what happens when this technology becomes available and the cosmetic use of it is is widespread. But I mean, better to think about it now than later. Alex Power writes a comment about how all of this relates to being gay and being trans uh, and confronts right up front the idea that um, the existence of a gay gene or a trans gene is not not an uncontroversial thing. And I think that this, before we get into sort of the 
the main part of of this comment uh, is something that is also worth considering that you know there are a lot of people who i think want to boil down the entirety of human experience and human existence to um our genes uh you know like did you get the dog lover gene? Um, and like that's, you know, there are a lot of things that might describe why someone does and does not like dogs um, that goes far beyond their genetic makeup. But that when you boil down everything that makes someone who they are into their genes, you get into really, you get into hot water very quickly. So that being said, in this situation, like many others, there is a question about whether or not it is responsible for you to make a decision for your child um, before you know, ba based upon what you would as assume uh, they would want um, and the relative or comparative value of going through an experience like transition. Uh, and is that something that you want to save them from or is that something that is that is an important part of, you know, that that identity or their assumed identity? And yeah, I mean, as Alice very, very clearly says, there's no easy answer. Eric, I think I completely agree, and I think that if there's one thing that I have learned over and over and over again from thinking through all of this stuff and like reading all the literature, it's that man, authenticity is just a complete crock, and it's a thing that human beings make up to judge other human beings. But I think that's maybe precisely why why we should think of, think it through or consider it really seriously because it might end up being not what we currently think it is, like. You judge someone often now for not being authentic, but is there a time where, where we will judge people for being authentic? And it doesn't seem outside the realm of possibility. Nicholas Boudreau comes at this from uh, a very strongly biological perspective saying that, you know, does gene editing really even make sense if the point of having kids is to pass your genes on to them and then to have them pass those genes on to their kids? Uh, and I mean, I, yeah, I understand this. I think that there is probably, uh, I think now it's maybe more related to the continuation of like the family name and the way that your family sort of uh, has, like the values, your family values, than it is the strict um, sort of uh, evolution inspired continuation of the species there. But there of course will be people who strongly disagree with me on that fact. Um, but I think that from the other perspective, the way to look at it is you are going to pass on the best version of your genes and that you're going to get rid of all of the gunk. Uh, you're going to, you know, clean out the closets um, and and that's still you. It's the best version of you. Insert Gattaca scene here. Joe Alias looks at the genetic modification question through the lens of antinatalism, which is this idea that it is perhaps morally troubling to even have children that you know human beings should maybe just stop having kids for a little while because it's not a good idea causes all kinds of problems um and uh, joe makes some really good points but it, his comment actually makes me think about the collision between these two things that if there is a if there is a moral imperative to stop having kids because of the state of the world but there is gene editing technology what is our moral imperative to use gene edit editing technology to assist in the state of the world? Like, does it become a moral imperative to somehow attempt to create children that, you know, don't need to eat as much food? Or uh, which can, or, you know, who can survive in some way in hotter temperatures because we appear to really want to ruin the, ruin the planet with fossil fuels? Um, and that are these things that we should be seriously considering, that if we are going to continue having kids, which it looks like we are, um, should we be future-proofing them in some way as soon as possible? I had never thought about that before reading this comment, and now I'm kind of freaked out. Deathwile, face all the way. Though I normally am the, uh, the GM, so I rarely get to, you know, like just focus on one character, but the ones that I have the most fun playing as are faces. 
In the episode, we talked about um, the sort of political and social ramifications of uh, parents deciding to edit the genes of their children so that they are born without disabilities is a massive, massive conversation well beyond the scope of the video itself. Um, and folks in the subreddit took us up on that invitation to have a, a massive conversation. And it starts with uh, a comment by uh, Joseha. So I just want to point out that this is a great conversation with lots of really good points being made. And if you have some time, it's a great read to sort of get a feel for how people feel about this. 